Appreciate everyone joining us. Uh, we're going to go ahead and, and kick things off. We are recording this session. We will post the recording after the fact. For those that are live with us, they'll be able to ask questions. You can use the raise a hand feature uh, down below in the Google Meet or just pop in a text question via the Google chat. But uh, we'll go ahead and kick things off. So welcome, everyone. My name is Jason Kirby, founder and managing director of Thunder.vc. We're a platform that makes it easier and faster for founders to raise capital using AI. And uh, we're welcoming Vin today, Vin Infante, to join us and tell us a little bit more about how founders can maximize their productivity and overcome extremely difficult challenges of uncertain times uh, and be able to, to thrive. So Vin, if you want to go ahead and give us a, a quick intro, and then from there, we'll allow you to kind of kick things off with uh, the meat of the presentation today. Perfect. Well, thanks for having me here, guys. And thank you, everyone, for joining. So my name is Vin Infante. I am a mental performance coach, therapist, and mentor. Been in mental health for over 13 years, worked with a lot of people in the thousands, <laughs> and I've now found my niche working with business owners, entrepreneurs, startups, and finance firms. So essentially what I've seen is that people that are high performance, much like everyone in this channel, tends to have high stress jobs, high, high pressure output that they have to do, and easily life could get in the way. Life could really feel unbearable. It could feel like everything is trying to break you. And so one of the reasons we put together this workshop today is to really help you guys have some tools and better tricks as you go on this journey as founders to find ways to stay unbreakable and grounded. And that's what we're going to put a massive focus on today. So what you guys can expect to learn is getting some tips and tricks on mindset, how you can increase your focus, how you can increase your productivity, how you could stay in a state where you're more grounded and less affected by the world. And most importantly, some really good strategies to refocus and redirect yourself if you ever feel like you're spiraling. So if that's uh, that's all good for the intro, Jason, I'm happy to start presenting the little workshop I've created for everybody here today. No, I'm excited. And I do want to encourage everyone to you know feel free to chime in at any point in time. So if they have any specific questions uh, for Ben or myself or specific to the material, uh, we do want to make this interactive. But I think uh, Ben's got a really good presentation that could be valuable to, to everyone here and anyone that watches uh, the recording. But Ben, I'll let you go ahead and dive right in. Thanks. And yeah, guys, feel free to take notes, um, throw questions in the chat box. And Jason, I don't know if it's something you typically do, but I'm happy to also just share the presentation so if everybody you know wants it after they could have access so you don't have to feel like you have to take tons of notes and not listen so i also like it to be interactive i want to talk to you guys i don't necessarily want to reach off read off the slides the slides have a lot of info but i'm gonna mostly monologue that piece all right so Perfect. present go ahead we'll do all right so you guys should be able to see it all right let's start this here slide show all right, so Unbreakable Founders. So who am I? I just gave you guys a little bit of that info, but I'll go a little more in depth. I want you to just get a piece of what I've been doing. So a lot of my life, I actually struggled victimhood, anxiety, depression, panic attacks. I had to figure out the best practices and best ways to develop self-mastery. Now, why this is so relevant to you guys is as founders, I know that it's extremely difficult. You're doing something that's new. You're pioneering something that's never been done, or if it has been done, you're trying to make it even better. You probably don't have a lot of people that understand you. You probably might feel like you're alone sometimes, maybe that you're ostracized. Your relationships, they probably don't get it. And so a lot of the times when we feel alone, we struggle more with anxiety, depression, some panic could set in. And I'm here to tell you that you don't have to live that way. One of the biggest things is that the perspectives you hold are what shaping your whole life right now. So we're going to do a lot of diving in on the ways that I've overcome these issues and how you guys can too. I've worked in mental health for over a decade, thousands of people. I'm a former FDNY firefighter, which we didn't share. And what I learned in fire department is a lot about leadership and what it means to truly live in a position of power and a powerful identity. Because when you're running into danger while everyone's running out, there's really something to learn in there. And I wanna encourage you guys to look at what you guys are doing as founders is you are essentially stepping into danger. You guys are dealing with financial hardships usually. I hope none of you are right now, but <laughs> I know the life of a founder isn't always as wealthy or extravagant as we hope it could be. I know that there's a lot to be said. You're going into the danger, you're going into the unknown, you're dealing with fires every day. In return, you guys are somewhat like firefighters. 
So I want to give you guys these tools. Now, the three things you need to do to stay grounded is this. Develop a strong sense of mastery over yourself, create conscious awareness, and cast a very powerful and compelling vision of your future. Now, a lot of you guys may think, well, how do we get a strong sense of mastery? How do we create this conscious awareness? Because those two are usually tied hand in hand. And one point you have to understand, how, how are you developing your narratives about life? What's the perspective you're holding? And on the other hand, it's can you question those things? Can you develop the conscious awareness part? Because that is going to be key to starting to change some of the behaviors and the other things that are going on. Safety and security and certainty do not come from the world. You're never going to find it in the economy. You're never going to find it in politics. You're never going to find it in your city or state. You can only find it within. And the last thing you guys really need to learn to stay grounded is creating that very powerful, clear, and compelling vision for your future, for both yourself and your company. Because even though we like to join the two and we like to think that I am the company, you're not your company. And you have a very separate part of yourself that's going to be traveling on the journey as well as your company going in its own trajectory. So let's step into what are these five aspects of self-mastery? Now, your thoughts are one of them. Everyone knows that we have tons of thoughts per day. For reference, we have about 60,000 thoughts per day. And they did some research and they found this. What's interesting is that 95% of those thoughts they actually found to be negative. No wonder so many people have trouble going through life and experiencing a higher quality of it. So we want to really rein in what the thoughts are. One of the best practices for trying to understand your thoughts better are actually logging them. If you have a journal, if you have a phone near you, everybody always has their phone. Put it in the notes. Sometimes when you have a thought, try to understand why am I having this thought? What is it stemming from? If you can start controlling your thoughts, you can start controlling your language, which is actually going to be one of the other powerful things. And most importantly, your emotions. Now, your emotions are these things that are traveling through your body. Everybody's heard of emotions. We know what they are. But in this regard, your emotions are energy. They're going to make you feel a certain way. They're going to make you act a certain way. So you want to gain influence and emotional mastery. Now, emotional mastery is tough for a lot of people. If you've ever said something along the lines of, you are making me angry, or I am feeling anxious because of that, what you're doing is you're giving away your power. Emotional mastery comes from the ability to not say you're making me angry, but saying something along the lines of, the behaviors that that person is exhibiting is causing me to feel anger. What about those things makes me feel anger? What about these things? What are the rules that I've created that make me feel anger? See, there's a whole nother level of accountability in that. So we want to learn how to master this. The next one is looking at your behaviors. Your behaviors are very in sync with what your identity is, who you believe yourself to be. Do you believe yourself to be a good person, a poor person? Do you believe yourself to be worthy of love? Do you believe yourself to be worthy of the life you're building? Do you believe yourself to be capable of building a company? Or do you think you're an imposter who's just trying to skate by and hoping no one will notice? Whatever you believe about yourself is what your behaviors will reflect because that's how you're going to conduct yourself in everyday life. Next is your actions. And your actions are going to be based on how you respond to situations. Again, they pull on your identity. And so you want to get very clear on what the actions are that, are, uh, that you're doing every single day because action without purpose is pointless. So start asking yourself, why am I doing the things I'm doing? How do they contribute? Are they getting me to a better place in my life or are they bringing me down? You have to start getting very clear on these things, especially when you're trying to grow your company. As you grow your company, you're going to notice that you're going to be taking more and more actions until you start getting overloaded. And then you really need a mental performance coach. <laughs> so to avoid the overload and avoid the burnout, get very clear and in control of what actions you're taking every single day, how they're contributing to your better uh, state of life or how they're taken away from your life and how can you delegate that out or cut it out completely. And lastly is your language. I believe language to be huge because language can actually show all four of the previous aspects. Your language is how you describe life, what you talk about, what you say about things. Do you wake up in the morning and say today's going to be a crap day? Do you wake up and say tomorrow's going to be phenomenal? How you're talking about life is telling you what your focus is. And so where focus goes, energy flows. You always want to be careful. The way you're describing things is the way you're going to experience life. And that's so important, especially if you want to stay grounded. So the big reason I'm putting so much emphasis on grounded is because a grounded founder is usually a successful founder. What winds up happening is so many people let these thoughts or any of these as aspects run away from them. 
and they start giving their power to the outside world. And as you do that, you start losing your sense of control. What this is all about, if you can gain mastery over these five, is you can actually create the deepest sense of inner control and you could always stay grounded no matter what's going on, whether the fundraising isn't going well, whether you got your 50th rejection, whether you really hope somebody was gonna come in and they told you they wire you the 100,000 and it's been three weeks and the check has yet to show, certainty never comes from any of that, it comes from within. These five aspects are the most important and powerful way to bring a sense of certainty to this world because these are the only five things you can control. Everything outside is, your, is, is just uncontrollable and it's your focus that will continue to be drawn away from you. So we wanna make sure that you're keeping it internal with these. Now, here's an exercise for you guys. I actually hope that everyone does this. I know I can't see any of you, but I would like you guys to take a second. Just think back to a time where you recently felt that you had no control over any situation in life. And I want you to just jot it down real quick. Take a second and, you know, Jason, do you think, you would you like to even take a minute? We could have everyone share this if you want. Or do you want to just kind of move on with us? Um, I think if someone wants to, to chime in, they just use the raise hand, but I don't uh, want to force it upon everyone and like slow everything down. But if someone right. who does want to, to chime in, just hit that raise hand and we'll we'll bring you into it. If not, we'll continue on. And then, uh, and just one thing, your, your video has been off. I don't know if you want to turn that oh, back on. But... It has? My bad, guys. I'm sorry. I didn't even notice yeah. that. <laughs> Let me fix it. I'm having a technical oh, issue. There, there we go. go. <laughs> Apologies for that, guys. Okay. So what I want you to do with this, uh, after you write this down, I want you to look at that situation. And I want you to see if there's at least one thing that you could directly control or that you can influence when you think about these five aspects of self-mastery. And I'll go back real quick and I'll show you. But thoughts, emotions, behaviors, action, and language. Whatever that situation was that you felt like you had no control over. What's one of those things that could start influencing it? Because if you could find one, you could expand to all of them. Maybe it's looking at a situation where you got a parking ticket and saying, well, you know, I was only in there for a minute. This person was a jerk, whatever. Now you could start saying, well, could I be more accountable for my actions? Because if I was accountable for my actions, would I really be mad about this? Would I really be angry that this happened? And so as you could see, if you if you do this exercise, you'll find that there's always one thing and you could expand it out. So that's what I want to challenge you guys to do. Even though you're doing this exercise right now, take this as an exercise for your future as well. Whenever a situation comes up that you feel you have no control, I want to challenge you guys to be able to look for one of the five and then expand it to all five. Okay. If anyone wants to chime in, cool. If not, we're moving forward. So this is the importance of developing these. By finding one of the five, you're going to allow this influence to occur and for your circumstances to be within your grasp. You can always increase your influence and make it expand. This shifts the power back into your hands. When you're focused on the external world, the power is in everybody else's hands. And now what you're able to do is you could start choosing an outcome that would be more befitting to you. This is going to create a sense of certainty. This is going to give you a sense of comfort and stability as you can move forward. So if you guys have ever been curious, why exactly do we struggle? Well, here's the funny thing. You're either creating your own belief system or you're believing your own bullshit. And why I say that is because of the fact that a thought that's unchallenged is a thought that you can never change. When you think about, well, what is the bullshit? The bullshit is anything that you've come across that you can't logically justify. Why does that make you angry? Well, I don't know. It's just always made me angry. Yeah, but why? Well, it's for as long as I can remember, it's made me angry. See, that's what we might call bullshit. But a belief system is something that's more tangible. Why does that make you angry? Well, you know, I've learned that when someone does that, it means that they don't respect you. It means that they don't care about you. It means that they don't want to be a part of your life. And that makes me angry. And so as you can see, there's a very clear difference in those two definitions. So how do we know or how do we really look at what a belief system is? So a belief system has many things about it. And I want you guys to start becoming aware and conscious of what your belief systems are because they're going to be paramount to building the next stages of your life and your business. So belief system is often done in the subconscious mind. Now, these belief systems run on autopilot. They're usually very unrealistic, as I was stating before. And a lot of the times, they get more and more powerful. This is probably the most important thing to understand. 
if you don't challenge your thoughts and you don't challenge the things that you know, quote unquote, no, I'm going to do the air quotes for that. What winds up happening is they become a more constrictive process. They keep you stuck in your way of thought because of the fact that you are not analyzing. Why is this way of thought here? Every thought that you form, every emotion that you're feeling, they all have a justification. They all have a process. They all have a reason. There's no good or bad in life. There's no positive and negative. There's only beliefs that serve a purpose and behaviors that meet a need. So if you could start challenging your belief systems, you could start changing your life. So how do you do this? How do you have the change? How do you rewire your brain? How do you challenge these subconscious programs that have become so relevant. So the three best ways you could do this is having a lot more powerful monologues, the challenging of the belief systems, and looking at which five of these aspects of self-mastery can you use and implement. Then you wanna start getting extremely clear and intentional on your identity. We might've talked a little bit about identity because of the fact that it's so important to actually changing your life. You can't become someone new if you're not clear on who you're trying to become. A lot of the times, all of these things that we're struggling with, our belief systems, our emotional patterns, our mental patterns, they're all things that not only serve us, but they're all things we're comfortable and familiar with. Your belief systems are always shaping your reality. As a founder, one of the biggest things that you guys have to deal with and that you have to overcome with your belief systems is that essentially you're maybe an imposter right? Some people probably resonate with that, that you're an imposter because you're trying to do something new. Nobody else has done it. You don't know if it's real. Maybe there's another part of, am I good enough? I keep getting rejected. Am I good enough when someone says they'll send me a check and they don't? Does it mean that my product sucks? Does it mean that I suck? What are the identities that you might be holding based on some of the negative feedback you're getting from the world? And then how can you shift that to saying, well, no, I'm not an imposter. I'm a pioneer. I'm creating something. I'm powerful in this role. I'm doing something important. Or even looking at, well, I didn't get, I didn't get the check because why? Well, that person wasn't a good fit for the company. Would I really want someone that isn't as enthusiastic about it as I am? This is how you could start shaping your identity. This is how you could start shaping your belief systems. And then quality questions. See, quality questions are super important. When we think about it, the subconscious mind, what we don't think about is questions. You see, your subconscious mind runs all the time. 95% of everything you think, say, do, feel, and experience is actually happening at all times in your subconscious. Now, why that's so powerful is because of the fact that we're typically not questioning it. We're just letting these things happen. And we're running it on a script that we've been running for, I don't know, 10, 20, maybe 30 years, maybe even more, depending on how old you are. And so what you want to look at is, what are the types of questions I'm asking myself every day? You might wake up and say, why does God hate me? <laughs> you might wake up and you might say, why does God love me? You might say, well, what's wrong with people? Why are they so incompetent? Or why are they so you know, fickle? We might have these terrible questions that we're asking. Make no mistake, your mind will always find an answer. So asking quality questions will start yielding you quality answers, which can also start impacting and shaping your subconscious belief systems. So quality questions. Now, I'm not going to go through all of these, but what I want you to know is that a quality question is something that promotes an action item and also looks at giving you a better outcome. What can I do today to become 1% better? What is something I could do right now to get myself out of this situation? Who can I call in this moment when I feel stuck, or I feel exhausted, or I feel like nobody gets me? What are resources or people in my network that I can utilize or ask for help from that can make or break right now my company? So quality questions are usually gonna get you into a state of creativity. Because when we're asking non-quality questions, what we're usually doing is putting ourselves in a state of survival. And a lot of the times we're scared. When we're in survival state, we have tunnel vision. We don't know what's going on. We're just trying to survive. We don't care what's on the outskirts. We're just looking right in front of us. And usually that's when things are the worst in our life. And the best way to start getting out of that is to ask better questions that broaden your horizons. So you might say, damn, we have a funding problem right now. Right now, we have a three month runway. We haven't gotten any new checks. I've been doing so much outreach. This is the tunnel vision, right? Now, 
that might not be an issue of resources. It might be an issue of resourcefulness. Because if you broaden the scope, you might say, who's in my network right now that I could ask for support? Who haven't I followed up with? Who haven't I asked for a check from? Who haven't I asked if they would be interested in the product? And then who's in my network that even if nobody can donate, can I ask them who they could connect me to? So you see, quality questions come to solution orientations, where non-quality questions put you in a problematic state and put you into a downward spiral of fear and anxiety and often get you to that point of panic. So to avoid panic, we want to start asking better quality questions because the quality of your life is going to be extremely, extremely dependent on the quality of questions you ask yourself. So a belief system, as we're talking about, is built from your identity. We don't see the world as it is. We see it as we are. This is extremely important to understand. You might sit here and think that the world is crap. You might sit here and think that funding is difficult to come by. You might sit here and think that you know people treat you unfairly because of the fact that you're a startup founder. But none of that's actually true. The only thing that's true is what you create. You're either consciously creating your life or passively experiencing it. Because if you're not consciously creating it, you're letting the world tell you what's happening. And this is taking you out of your focus. This is taking you out of your strength zone. So as you guys remember, when I was talking about those five aspects of mastery, the biggest part of not passively experiencing life is by consciously creating it through utilizing those. Your five aspects of mastery are going to allow you to consciously create life. It's going to challenge you to be accountable and take ownership, take actions, and utilize better emotional processes, better thought processes, and taking actions that are clear and concise so that you can start actually creating the life you want, so that you could start getting more outcomes you want. And don't get me wrong, I'm not sitting here and telling you guys that if you have complete self-mastery, life will always be phenomenal. Life isn't always gonna be phenomenal. Pain is a part of life. Problems are a part of life. The thing is, is navigating them with ease is what you can do better. And sometimes it might even say, like, I'm going to fail right now. I know I'm going to fail because I didn't get the thing I needed. Or I know I'm going to fail because what I was expecting to happen didn't. But as I'm about to go on this part of having honesty and saying I'm failing, what can I do to come up from that? What can I start next? Or how can I restart? Whatever the case is. So I don't want you guys to think that just because of the fact that you're taking more ownership and you're consciously creating life, it's a cure-all and you're invulnerable to the world. Things are still going to happen in the world no matter what. How you deal with it is your choice. And that's what I'm talking about with this piece of it. So if you want to create a more powerful identity, and that's what everything stems from, you want to start looking at what is the identity you want to hold. Because your identity is actually very responsible for the complex issues in your life. And it's a very, very simple process. Your identity forms your behaviors. Behaviors are based on, as I said before, who you are. It's an extension of your identity, your character. Your behaviors lead to actions. The actions can move up and down, doesn't necessarily have to be tied to your behaviors. However, they will also more than likely stem from it. Those actions are going to build your habits. Your habits are your day-to-day -day activities. Are you going to the gym? Are you reading? Are you educating? Are you doing outreach? Are you connecting with other people, other founders? Are you doing the things you need to do daily? And lastly, those will give you your results. And your results are going to be a direct reflection of that identity you've held for yourself. So as you can see, I've explained it in a way that it's very simple, but it creates complex issues because of the fact that it's never this simple. As humans, we have this ability to twist things and we have this ability to make them worse than they might be. And so you might look at things that are going on in the startup. You might look at the fact that right now it's been a startup winter. It's been so hard for people to get funding. And the issue is not that there's no more money. The issue is that people are a little bit more scared now. So if you look at how can you become someone that creates safety, security, trust, and likability and gets funding, because there are still startups getting funding, right? It's just there might be less getting funding. It just might be that people are more cautious about giving a check. Nothing ever ends. It's not that simple and it's also not that complex. It just depends on how you're looking at life. So identifying who you currently are and who you need to become, major, major key component here. How do you do this though? How do you evolve? 
get clear on the identity. Challenge yourself to live it out daily. One of the things that helps people with creating a new identity is this. Write out, and this is, this is going to be my challenge to you guys as well, another activity, but not for now. Take this as homework. Write out who it is that you want to be. Do you need to be a, a leader? Do you need to be a founder? What does that founder look like? What does the founder do daily? What types of conversations does the founder? What's the product that the founder has? More importantly, who's capable of leading that company? What would a good leader look like? Does a good leader work out every day? Do they eat healthy? Do they do yoga? Do they have mindfulness practices? Do they have journaling habits, right? Get very clear on what you think each of these roles are because your identity isn't just one person, it's multiple. Look at all the roles in your life. Look at who you are. Founder, you're maybe, maybe you have another company, maybe you're like a two-time entrepreneur or something. Maybe you're in a relationship, you're a boyfriend, a girlfriend, wife, husband. Maybe you're a father, maybe you're a mother. Who are all of the roles that you have within you? And what does it mean to live out very powerfully each one of those roles? And I want you to take those and I want you to list them out and get super clear on each identity because each identity is going to give you the ability to live with the highest quality of life. So once you have that clarity, then start taking it and breaking it down to actions and then break that down to habits. Do that every single day. And I will guarantee that within a few months, you won't recognize yourself or even your business for that matter. Because if you do everything properly, it could potentially go great. So last piece of this workshop that I want to jump into, and this is going to be a very powerful part of it, is also creating a very, very compelling future. Now, one of the biggest things that people I see get stuck a lot is people that don't have a good, clear, concise vision. You see, action without purpose is pointless. The biggest problem that people encounter is that they don't know why they're doing what they're doing. They don't know where they're trying to go. If I were to invite you guys on a hike and I say, hey, let's go hiking. Well, where are we going? Don't worry about it. Well, what do you need? Don't worry about it. When are we leaving? Doesn't matter. Are you guys going to be excited about that hike? I mean, do you even think we're going to complete it? What are the, what's the success likelihood of that hike? Probably low. 5%, 10%, 0%. We might not even get there, right? Now, if I were to say to you, here's where we're going. We're going to the top of this mountain. We're going to leave at 7 a.m. It's going to take us two hours. Bring comfortable clothes. Bring a pair of shorts. It's going to be hot. Bring a sandwich, gallon of water. These are the things you'll need. This is the time of the trip. Likelihood of us completing that is like a 99% unless something crazy happens, right? And it's very easy to now figure out what we have to do. So clarity actually gives us the ability to move forward, and it gives us the ability to really get clear and concise on what it is that we're doing every day and what's the purpose behind it. And when there's purpose behind it, it's a lot easier to execute because so many times people get caught up because of the fact that they haven't come to a place of purpose. So this is also extremely important because the subconscious mind cannot tell the difference between visualization and reality. Now, what does that exactly mean? Well, you've probably heard of people doing visualization techniques, right? They're talking about manifesting. And some people might think manifesting is, you know, some woo-woo mystical stuff. And I think to some degree it might be. However, what the research does show is that your subconscious mind cannot tell the difference between subconscious programming. So when you're sitting there and you're visualizing what you want out of your life, where do you want your business to go? How can you imagine it going? Are you seeing this and feeling this every single day? Because if you do, you can actually lock that moment into your present, which is also another way to stay grounded and confident and comfortable in times of uncertainty. The cool thing that allows you to hack your brain chemicals, so to speak, is visualization because you get to lock in the feeling as if you already achieved the goals you're reaching for in the moment when you might be feeling the most scared and the most uncomfortable. So being able to sit in almost a meditative state, visualizing the things you want and bringing that feeling and sensation into your body allows us to get out of a negative mindset. It creates a mind shift. It could take you from lack to abundance. It can allow you to get into a state of motivation and start taking action when otherwise you were previously paralyzed because all you're seeing is the world crashing around you. And as a founder, that happens a lot. That happens weekly, monthly, 
I don't know. You guys have been in a lot more than me. You would know. You would know that things definitely feel hard. But what if you could take a moment to sit in silence with yourself and create the moment of peace that you're looking for to allow you to not stay stuck and paralyzed, but instead feel empowered, grounded, and focused to push through to what you need? That's with the power of visualization. That's the power of unlocking your subconscious mind. So one of these best practices for casting a powerful vision is getting super clear on your goals. The point of a goal is not about the goal itself. The point of a goal is who you need to evolve into to live out that goal. And I want to repeat that one more time in case you guys missed it. The point of a goal is not about the goal itself. It's about who you need to evolve into to live out that goal. Once you become the person you're working towards being, you never have to worry about that goal again because now you've done it and chances are you're living it. So when we're looking at how do you create a goal, it's more focused on the identity you need to hold. Instead of saying, I want to do a million in revenue in my business, that's fine. What does the business need to become to do a million in revenue? In fact, who do I need to be as a leader to be able to lead a company that's going to generate a million in revenue. Do you see the subtle nuances? Because that's the most important part of it. So one of the things that I talk about creating is a mission board. And it's a lot like a vision board. However, it's better because it's a lot more practical. And it challenges you to really get behind something more powerful. I think that a vision is nice, but a mission is more powerful. And when you have a mission for where you're going and for where you want to be, what's going to wind up happening is you're going to be a lot more clear and concise in your day-to-day -day actions. So this is another tool that I'm going to challenge you guys to utilize. And luckily for you, I've created this tool and all of my clients use it. Every founder, every CEO, every entrepreneur I work with, this is a requirement for them to work with me is they have to freaking make one of these because of the fact that if you don't know where you're going, not only can I not support them in getting there, they can't even support themselves because action without purpose is pointless. So we want to think, how do you create this? Now, I'm going to go over this. It sounds a lot like a vision board, but here's where it's different. You're going to have a few photos that are going to be super dialed in to what it is that you want to work on. Now, these could be futures of uh, photos of your future. Personal and business mixed, I believe, is the most powerful because they are usually intertwined. If you find that your personal life isn't going spectacular, I will guarantee your business isn't going that great either, and vice versa. If your business is super affected, your personal life is probably taking a hit. Maybe your business is burning and all of a sudden your, your relationships go on the back burner and everyone's mad at you. And then that stuff starts to affect how you're doing in business. So now you can't be grounded and working in your business when everybody's mad at you in your personal life. <laughs> so we want to have a few photos of what you're really working towards. Mix them up, personal and professional. Present tense affirmative statement. Again, remember what we were talking about with the identities. When you say I am something, all of a sudden it becomes a part of who you are so it doesn't have to be super cheesy you don't have to say i am a multimillionaire. it's just more so along the lines of like this is my bank account from my hard work and what that means is that this is what you're committed to achieving this is what you are are committed to working towards day in and day out and this is what you're going to start creating action plans around personal mission vision and value statement as well as your business mission vision and value statement now i have it as optional here however I do believe that you should also really have the business mission, vision, and value statements because no good company has ever survived without a mission, vision, or value. And if you want to grow into the leader capable of bringing forth a massive, amazing company with amazing opportunities in this world, you also need to know your personal mission, your vision, your values. Why are you even doing this? What's even the point? A lot of the times you can't even figure it out. How can you expect other people to want to invest in your business? And one of the things that I've seen when working with a lot of startups is yes, people want to see numbers. They want to invest in a business that's going to be profitable. They want to invest in a business that they think will do well in the market, but they want to invest in a good founder. They want to invest in someone who's mission driven, who's clear, who's concise, who shows that they are grounded and who shows that they have so much compassion for not only this world, but themselves and the things they're doing in it. So I want to challenge you guys to really get clear on your personal and business mission, vision and value statements. Next is I want you to find four to six quotes that you can admire from great people because quotes are timeless pieces of wisdom that are going to help keep you in a straight and narrow path. 
find quotes that mean something to you. One of my favorite quotes is by Aristotle. And I love to talk about it. I love to end meetings with it and podcasts because I found it to be so impactful in my life that I share it with everyone. And I'll share it with you. Aristotle said, we are what we repeatedly do. Excellence then is not an act, but a habit. So I'd taken that quote when I was trying to develop myself as a person. And I challenged myself every single day. And I said, if excellence is what I repeatedly do, and it can only form from that, and it becomes a habit, what do I need to do every single day to be excellent? You see, a quote will challenge you to live out that piece of wisdom every day and can really create drastic changes in your mindset. And lastly, as we were talking about before, is purpose. Every photo that you put up there must have deep intention and connection to your future. Make sure that what you're working towards holds deep meaning to you or you're not going to do it and it's just going to become a useless wall decoration and nobody needs that. So this is how you're going to get the most out of your mission board. Pair it with the journaling practice. Every single day, start using these mindful practices, by the way. Every single day, as you take out, take out a piece of paper, a journal, whatever you have, start writing down what's at least one of those photos that you're committed to working towards. How are you going to live out your mission today? Get very clear on your day-to-day -day actions. Mindfulness is also one of the number of ways to reduce multiple uh, mental issues, such as anxiety, depression, panic, and even more important that a lot of business owners and startup founders don't talk about is dissociation. How many times does life get so heavy where you're completely dissociated? Dissociation, for those of you that don't know, is you have no emotional connections to anything going on because life feels so painful. The only way to stop the pain is to disconnect from everything entirely. Journaling is literally one of the best mindful practices, hands down, to stop you from being dissociated and to get you to a place where anxiety, depression, and panic can start subsiding. Because as you get all of these challenges and problems out of your head, you could start journaling and taking them and putting them somewhere else aside from your head. And the better way to use journaling is to not only use those practices for managing your emotional issues, but to also get very clear and concise on how you're challenging yourself to move forward. Then spend time, as we talked about before, visualizing meditative practices. Bring the things you want to achieve into your body. Create the feelings, create the certainty, create the security by seeing it before you achieve it. Practice an incantation. All right, hold on. This isn't going to be some crazy voodoo stuff. I'm not asking you to dance around a fire. <laughs> an incantation is a more powerful version of an affirmation. Now, an incantation is just getting your whole body into it. If you've ever seen those guys that are doing rain dances, they're literally dancing, are they not? They're chanting, they're cheering, they're saying, please let the rain come and doing a dance with it. In an affirmation, what you do is you just stand there and you're like, I am successful. What an incantation would be is something along the lines of bring your whole body in to it and lock it in. Say, I am successful. Bring your arms in, cross your chest, tap your chest, whatever you need to do to feel the power in the words that you're saying. Because if you can't feel the power in the words that you're saying, what's the point of even saying it? You might even laugh at it, uh, affirmations. I think affirmations are funny. How many times do you see somebody that doesn't feel attractive stand in front of a mirror and just go, I am beautiful. I am beautiful. It's like, no, you're not. No, you're not. Because if you thought you were beautiful, <laughs> you wouldn't be so lackluster about it. And you wouldn't be sitting there just saying it with such a monotone version of yourself. Getting into the power of the words that you're saying makes them more powerful, it makes them carry weight, and it helps with your belief systems because when you put weight and power behind your words and you encant them, they actually become a lot stronger. So think about that next time you say something to yourself. Are you saying it with conviction? Or are you saying it with disbelief and a lack of power? Challenge yourself to live out the quotes we were talking about. Every day, like I told you with my example from my Aristotle experience, Challenge yourself to be that person that says, how can I live this quote out? Match your actions to your mission. Ask, where am I going? And then this behavior, this action that I'm exhibiting will get me closer to my goal or further away. Keep it very black and white in that regard. Now, put the board where you see it daily. Create this and put it somewhere you can see it daily. Now, for those of you that, I mean, obviously you can't see it, but I've, I'm pointing off my screen. I'm looking at my board, it's right there in front of me. Sometimes I'm in my office for 16 hours a day. I stare at that thing all day, every day. 
And the reason I do that is because lastly, it's extremely important to reevaluate it often. The goals you set out for today are based on the person you currently are, the perspective you hold, and the values you embody. But those things change and they're supposed to. So constantly reevaluate that board, make sure that it is consistently in alignment to who you are and who you are continuing to become. So uh, everyone, thank you very much for joining me. You could scan that, it takes you to the website. You could download the free mission board template, which is the thing I was just talking to you about. If you don't wanna keep those instructions, you could download this, it's like a 10 page thing. It's a free resource. I'm not going to uh, ask you to buy anything. It's just take this resource. And you're all welcome to connect with me, Instagram, LinkedIn, uh, go to the website, Twitter, TikTok, whatever you got. And now we have about 15 minutes left. So we're gonna open it up for some Q&A, some questions. And um, that's about it, guys. Awesome. Really appreciate the that, Ben. And yeah, just kind of while we allow people the opportunity to kind of chime in with, with questions, I'll just kind of share. Um, you know, a little bit of context is why I feel this is so impactful for founders. I know you covered a lot of material and gave some very actionable uh, next steps for a lot of founders on their journey. But just personally speaking on, on my background, I feel in each company I've been at over the last 10 years, I've had these major kind of pivot points where I'm at my absolute low or the market kind of kicks me in the face, uh, you know, pretty hard and forced me to pivot. So COVID was one where you know, talk about the lowest of lows. And we had to really come out of that with my my last company and turn things around mm -hmm. uh, in a completely new brand, new offering, new materials, because what we had was targeting schools and schools were shut down. You know, we had a, <laughs> uh, and we had a term sheet pulled. We had a term sheet come in on March 10th for a $6 million series A, and it got pulled on March 14th. Um, you know, and so like these tragic moments happen and, um, you know, I've had this happen on all levels of everything you've kind of brought up today. I've kind of been through as a founder, both small and big. And it's so important to kind of remind yourself that you do have control and that you can take things over despite things being absolutely awful, things feeling more of its macro than internal. Um, you know, the most recent one, just the last you know year in the VC winter, we're calling it. Uh, my job is to help companies raise money in the worst fundraising environment of all time. <laughs> Not all time, but you know, pretty pretty bad. Uh, yeah. Had me questioning myself, my skills, everything I was doing, and how we sustain our operations here at Thunder. Um, and it wasn't until you know the last couple of months I've kind of come out of that haze and taken things into my you know into control, the things that I can actually uh, take charge of. I set my goals, set my vision, and you know now we're crushing them and we're building a lot more consistency and better offerings and servicing more people and more sustainable uh, operations, uh, despite being a, what some would consider like a rock bottom moment or you know very low moment in their, their career or in their role. Uh, so it's really important to kind of take in some of these tips, whether you practice all of them or just acknowledge some of the details here and how you can be in control of your own destiny, uh, I find to be super valuable to not fall into a very self-inflicting negative outcome or negative situation. So I just kind of want to share a little bit. I didn't get in crazy detail because I don't have, you know, have enough time, but uh, I just want to kind of give some context of how this could be applicable for, for founders that are going through difficult times and maybe blaming externally. And despite that might be the reality, it's still important to be able to take responsibility for what you can control, ask yourself these questions, ask who you can help, ask what you can, you know, be able to pull in with it that you've already established that maybe isn't coming to mind because you're so caught up in the weeds uh, in the day to day. Uh, so just really appreciate then you sharing the one, the resources and two, your insights on how you've been able to help founders and uh, your professionals kind of overcome these these situations. But um, I do want to open it up to the, to the floor. If anyone has any questions or thoughts or maybe a particular issue they'd like to address. Uh, Alan, yes. Yeah, uh, I do. Vincent, earlier you said that you'd uh, make available the outline you just went through. Is it on your website or how do we get it? It is. And I also just thought about that because I ended the presentation. So I put it in the in the chat. You could just click that link. It goes directly to the resource. And okay. if for any reason it doesn't get sent to your mailbox, you just email me 
and I'll make sure that it gets out because some people have said sometimes it gets delivered and they can't open it. But if that's the case, email me, I'll send you it directly. Yeah, it's particularly interesting to me because virtually every point you made is something I need to do that I'm not doing now. So thank you very much. Of course, my pleasure. Oh, that's great to hear, Alan. Uh, anyone else want to chime in? Uh, if so, just go ahead and unmute yourself and, uh, and chat. Or if you want to do uh, just then use the chat box for a question, you're welcome to do so. I'll give it a couple of seconds. Usually people are pretty shy to pop in and ask questions as they listen. No but worries. I'll give it a second here. Sure. Hi, everyone. Yeah, hey. I asked something that, hey. Um, I was wondering, uh, we talk about being risk off today in the market and how you actually appear to be a risk off asset uh, who to invest in. Uh, what are your thoughts about it? Like how to appear more today than ever a risk off founder? I think that, and, and I think Jason will have some good insights on that too. I'll give my, my small piece. I'm sure he'll have some good stuff. But I think that now I've worked with a few startups that right now are having a lot of trouble raising. And one of the biggest things is that, at least for them, they're valuating very high. And a lot of people are really uncomfortable right now with high valuations because of the fact that the market is a little crazy, the market is a little uncertain. So then the question that I bring up to him is, well, how can you make it look really, really appealing? Because kind of, in my opinion, getting an investor is a lot like marketing and sales, right? Even though you're not necessarily like they're not buying a product, they're investing in it. It's still a very similar scenario of how do you show so much value that this is a no brainer for them to be a part of. And right now where things are hard, it falls a lot more on you guys, the founders to make things extremely appealing because you guys have, like, if we're facing it, you guys don't have much power because there's not enough funds for everyone. So how do you guys make it that they feel that they have the power? They're seeing that it's super appealing, super attractive, and they're getting exactly what they want. Now, Jason, I want to point that over to you too, because I'm sure you got some good stuff on it. Yeah. So when it comes to this current market and what we're dealing with, basically what I've been trying to guide founders, the the, the founders, there's, there's two paths when it comes to fundraising, if you are fundraising. You know, one is kind of this onslaught of just meeting after meeting and you know, taking small wins when you get them as they roll in and it's not very calculated and you're you kind of have the chicken and egg problem. You need money to kind of get traction but you can't you know, get money without traction. And so a lot of founders struggle with this narrative and you know, albeit it could be both an external market situation, it could be other things, but as you know, Vin was trying to sh share earlier, it's like, you know, take accountability for it, take control over what you can, um, you know, take action on. And really the founders that I see have success in de-risking the investment are where you're at kind of like a inflection point. And this is something I'm really hitting on hard in this market with founders is how can you manufacture growth? How can you manufacture an inflection point that gives you the appeal of you know velocity or kind of that rocket ship takeoff and up into the right uh, while being under resourced? And this is where like this is something I just went through with Thunder where you know we raised a little bit of money, but the intent was to kind of get and operate a, on a cash flow uh, positive basis instead of having to go out and raise additional capital. And the more companies I see take that path that look to be independent and look to be less reliant on capital raises are the ones that are actually the ones able to raise capital um, because they're building sustainable businesses with good unit economics and hitting a growth inflection point. I'll be incredibly hard, but that's what VCs want to see. They want to see you already figure that out before they write you a check. Mm -hmm. And that can be discouraging to a founder just because that is very hard because you got to go out and do that <laughs> easier said than done with little to no resources. Um, Cause I know there's so many founders, Oh, if I just had a million dollars and I could buy ads and we would grow overnight, that's <laughs> not what VCs want to see. Um, <clears throat> they want to see you get creative. They want to see you work harder. They want to see you try and find um, innovative, innovative ways of hitting some kind of growth or solving a product problem or, being able to recruit talent to solve these problems in adverse situations where you don't have, you can't write, you know, big payroll checks. Um, and that's something that VCs need to see now because, you know, capital is not going to always be there and they need to see that you can survive and thrive with less capital. And so the so more you can kind of show them, yeah. go ahead. Building resilience at the end of the day. 
yeah, it, it's not just resilience, but it's also showing that you know how to calculate the momentum of your startup and execute across that plan. Because uh, those are the founders that spend the least amount of time fundraising and more time building their business are the ones that took the time to kind of create this trajectory and execute it across it and just informed investors of what's going on as opposed to trying to go out and constantly pitch and pitch and pitch and pitch and spending all this time pitching. Uh, mm -hmm. So just one way to look at it. <clears throat> I, I'll, add, I'll add one more piece to that too, is I, I think that one of the most important parts that Jason is saying, which I totally agree with is, especially at this time, a lot of companies are really looking to figure out how are you going to become profitable, right? Because we just came out of a really weird time where companies were blowing up and people were throwing money at it where maybe the company shouldn't have blown up, but everybody was willing to risk money. Now, like I've even, one of my clients was doing a, like did a previously a $5 million raise and he still wasn't profitable and nobody would invest in him. And now he's looking to sell his company because now that ton, funds are tighter, everyone wants to see like, are you going to be able to be profitable? And one of the biggest things that I've even talked about in, for instance, in building my coaching company is one guy I was talking to, I was like, oh, why don't we do ads? He's like, sure. He's like, good ad spend for coaches, five to 10,000 a month. So you spend five to 10,000 a month. However, if you get used to doing that process, you're stuck on ads forever. So I think Jason brought up a good point is like a lot of people would say, oh, well, if I get a million dollars, I could just run ads and fundry and, and get clients. But what you're doing is you're actually setting yourself up to be on, dependent on ads forever. And that's not something that people want to see either, because that really makes margins a lot smaller. If you consistently have to pump, you know, thousands upon thousands into ads every month, it just doesn't even really make sense. I appreciate the question, Valentina. Uh, anyone else have uh, questions before we before we wrap up? We'll give it a, a second or two for anyone to chime in. All right. Well, um, Vint, I really appreciate you coming on, sharing your insights. Like we said, we will uh, pass on the event details and the recording as well as the materials that Vint has provided. Um, you know, once we wrap up the the event and publish it on our on our website, uh, so be on the lookout for for those materials in case you didn't get it. And also, just as a reference, they are in the chat. Since we had just it seemed like we had a couple people join last minute, I'll go ahead and add it back to the chat there for anyone to to reference as far as using that uh, that vision board um but uh with that said appreciate everyone spending their time with us uh this thursday afternoon uh vin thank you for sharing your insights and if anyone wants to get a hold of Vin, what was uh what's the best way to get a hold of you then uh you can go to my website which is here on offer offer the free resource i have a opportunity for a free call or you could go to my Instagram, uh, it's at vin.infante, and I always answer DMs. Or LinkedIn, LinkedIn's Vincent Infante. <laughs> Perfect. All right, everyone, uh, appreciate the time today. Thanks for joining us, and um, I'm glad to see that we ended on time. So that's always a good thing, get everyone back to back to work. And uh, look forward to hosting our next event, which will be this Wednesday. We're gonna be talking about revenue-based financing that you are able to completely control independently of any outside bank you are and your community will be your bank uh, as we work with uh, WeFunder uh, to talk about their latest product. Uh, so that will be a fun event. So keep an eye out for the announcements on that material coming soon and uh, look forward to seeing you guys in the community. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. <laughs>